What is up guys, it's Lamin from Lamin Tech. It has now been a year since I have decided to pick up a Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G as my new phone. Like I said in the unboxing video, I will be telling you guys, or showing you guys rather, a later review on this phone. What is it like to have it a year later, what I like about it, and what I dislike about it. Now, without any further ado ladies and gentlemen, let's get into this. Let's start off with the design. Now, for a mid-ranger, I do like the design of this phone. The front, you got a 6.67 inch display with bezels that aren't too thick. They're just right for a mid-ranger or for a phone in general, these bezels are actually just right for me personally. The hole punch also makes it beautiful. Then you got the frosted back glass, which in my opinion does look cool. It does, it is something different. Usually we're used to the glossy back finish, but the matte design, the matte frosted design, I like it. I do like it. It doesn't pick up my fingerprints as much as my old phone, which has a glossy back glass. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not complaining. You also got the flat sides, which we can all, re obviously, we all know who inspired Xiaomi to do this design. But my only complaint about the design is the weird camera lens. It's not, it's not what I'm used to. Like what I'm used to, it's literally, it's usually symmetrical. But with this, it's just a bit weird. Like, for example, you've got another circle that has AI branding in it. Like, at this point, we are all aware that cameras do use AI. But there's no need to, like, still advertise it. Then there's a red dot at the bottom. We don't know what that is. We don't know if that's another sensor for portrait photos. Is that somewhat of a LiDAR sensor? We don't know. It's just no one's talked about it. And I, find it, I do find it a bit weird there. With the display, we have a 120 hz 6.67 inch full HD plus AMOLED display. Now that sounds crazy for a 300 pounds phone, and it really is a nice display. 120 hz makes it all silky and smooth to use. The 6.67 inch, in my opinion, is a okay size. It's perfect. It fits perfectly in my hand. The full HD plus resolution is just perfect, and the AMOLED makes the blacks look absolutely amazing. Looking at photos, watching videos, it's it's perfect. The phone does come with a 67 watt fast charger in the box. Now it comes with the phone unlike some brands mm. <clears throat> it is capable of charging the phone in less than an hour and it's pretty impressive to come with a 300 pounds phone considering there are phones more expensive than it for example for a thousand quid that are only coming still coming with 25 watt charges so for this 300 quid phone to come with a 67 watt fast charger it is pretty impressive it does have a 108 megapixel camera. I won't gonna, I'm not going to lie to you. This 108 megapixel camera for a mid-ranger is a hit or miss. It's okay for a mid-ranger, but it's a hit or miss. Because obviously the 108 megapixel camera is also being powered by a mid-range chip. So it's like the 108 megapixel kind of overpowers the camera. But nonetheless, the camera does take great photos. Uh, not, I'm not going to lie. So far, some of the photos I've taken with this phone, it's okay. But like I said, it's a hit or miss. So some of the photos you take will come out good and perfect. But some of them you'll have to retry. Night photography. I don't really take night photography on this phone. But I'm not going to lie. It's actually pretty impressive. Night photography, the shots I've taken, they're actually okay. It does come, like it says in the name, with 5G. Now 5G is notice noticeably faster than 4G coming from a 4G phone, but it also depends on your area because 5G is not covered everywhere. No, no, in my town, in my city, there is 5G almost everywhere you go, but the busier the town, it goes to like 4G, 4G plus and goes to 5G, it fluctuates, but there is 5G on this phone and it does work well and it's pretty fast. The battery life on this phone is pretty cool. With a 5000 milliamp hour battery, the battery does tend to last me the whole day if I use it lightly at 120 hertz. So I can, let's say, I wake up in the morning at seven o'clock at a full charge. It'll probably last me until about six, seven o'clock in the evening and that's when I've got to recharge it. So that's actually not too bad. I'm very impressed with it. And if I use the display at 60 hertz, the battery can last me till the next day. So maybe around three o'clock the next day is when I'd have to start to charge it. So to be honest, the battery on this thing is pretty impressive and it delivers well. The speakers on this phone, I'm not going to lie to you, they are not the best. They aren't the best. 
that's if you use it without Dolby Atmos. Dolby Atmos makes it better. If you turn on Dolby Atmos in the phone settings and you tune it right, your these speakers are gonna be amazing for its price. But without Dolby Atmos, there is lack of bass and it makes the phone feel and sound very, very cheap. Like, you know, like, ah, maybe like a toy almost, you know, the speakers are like in toys. It's a bit better than that. But definitely, if you have a Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G, make sure to turn on Dolby Atmos because it just makes the sound sound so much better. It also comes with a Z-axis linear vibration motor, which is which is just perfect for this phone. It makes it feel somewhat premium. You know those cheap phones that come with a generic vibration motor with awful haptic feedback. Yeah, this phone actually has a decent haptic uh, haptic motor. It makes it feel premium. The haptics on this phone are amazing. Swiping home navigating through the phone the haptics are amazing it's so good that just like the iphone with its um synchronized vibration pattern with the ringtones the redmi also has that on me ui which i find pretty cool unfortunately i don't know why nobody talked about it like when i got the phone i was left to figure out i was messing around with the set and i realized that yes this also has synchronized vibration patterns just like the iphone so i'm not gonna lie for a 300 pound phone this is pretty impressive it also does come with SD card expansion. It's still it's nice to see SD card expansion still being on mid-range phones and it allows more storage. But to be honest, with my configuration 6 gig and 128 gigabytes of storage, I don't see the need of one of needing to put an SD card. But hey, that's just me personally. I haven't even used up to 64 gig of the storage. Maybe some people, yeah, they'll need more. But to be honest. It is nice to see an SD card on this phone. Unfortunately though, you it is, although the phone is dual SIM, you can't have both SIMs and the SD card in at once. It's either you have one SIM and an SD card or you have two SIMs in it. Unfortunately, that's how it works. Now for the dislikes of this phone. So <clears throat> one thing I do not like about this phone is that there is no variable refresh rate means that the phone will constantly be refreshing at 120 hertz like so let's say for example i'm scrolling through an article and i stop because i'm reading so i stop scrolling and it's, the screen is frozen because i'm reading right it will still refresh at 120 hertz usually some phones would dial it mid ranges would dial it down to 60 hertz to save battery or some flashes will go all the way down to one hertz to save battery but unfortunately with this phone it stays on 120 hertz even on the always on display it's still continuously refreshes at 120 hertz this one doesn't bother me personally but i feel like some people it would bother some people this phone is not capable of 4k recording in 4k and playing back 4k content this phone cannot do any of that this is due to the snapdragon 695 chipset that's in here it is not capable of encoding 4k at all so whether you that's why in the camera app there is only the maximum setting you can do is 1080 30. There is no option for 4K 30 even, there's nothing like that. And the same goes for 4K playback. So on YouTube, you're limited to 1080p playback, or even I believe Netflix, you'll also be capped to 1080p. And if you try to play a 4K video or someone sends you a 4K video, you'll just get an error saying can't play video. So me personally it doesn't bother me for the recording but for the playback but it can be very annoying i have to go back to my old phone or go on my computer or laptop watch that footage and then come back to the phone third dislike i'd say is the macro camera now don't get me wrong the macro camera is actually not bad it does take some decent shots but in my opinion for a phone with this price point people it'll mainly be maybe young adults teenagers or even the elderly who would go for such a phone but a macro camera in my opinion isn't worth isn't for a phone like this no one's gonna use it like i'll be honest this macro camera i've only used it i've used it less than 10 times ever since i've got this phone i feel like this phone would have benefited more from a telephoto camera but the macro camera or the two megapixel macro camera isn't that bad like i said if it had a telephoto camera that would have been much better but macro it's it's, it's not bad it's not bad and the last thing I dislike about this phone is software. MIUI 
isn't that bad on this phone but i just want to point out this the phone came out in around january 2022 globally so in the european union european markets that's when this phone was released and around that time that was when android 12 was announced and this is when manufacturers were starting to adopt android 12. for some reason xiaomi still thought we'll release this phone with android 11 and yeah which like ruins its update cycle because that means now it's maybe gonna go up to android 13 and that should be the end but if it came with android 12 maybe it could have got 13 and 14. um miui 14 is still not here for this device as well uh, my brother got miui 14 on his xiaomi 11 Lite 5g ne on top of android 13 in around january or february it is now may and there is still no sign of miui 14 let alone android 13 for this device so i feel like that's a bit of a bummer for this device android 12 is somewhat unusable it's it's unstable it can be slow at times it can lock up at times android 11 was definitely more stable on this phone updates do feel incomplete as well for example check the screen recording of this phone MIUI 13.0.7 based on Android 12. Can somebody explain to me why this is the typing sound and tapping sound? Like, Xiaomi's trying to time travel us back to 2014, 2013 like i'm not a big fan i'm not a big fan with the tapping sound and the keyboard sound keyboard sounds horrible but what makes up for it is there are because there are a lot of recoveries well not a lot but so far as of now there are recoveries for this phone uh lineage os recovery is there there is also twrp has recently been ported to this phone i believe orange fox is coming soon to this phone as well and there are a lot of custom roms on this phone for example right now me personally i am running project elixir it is very smooth very fast and i like it it's very stable to use as well so there are also others such as evolution x project um, i mean project elixir I already said that uh pixel experience as well but like i said you can go to the xda forums and you will find a lot of custom roms for this device so conclusion Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G one year later, is it still worth it? In my opinion, yes and no. Yes, because for £300, what you're getting is pretty good. It's a banging deal. For £300, 108 megapixel camera, 120 hertz display, 5G, 67 watts fast charging. I can't complain. But no, because of the software. Well, if you get this, I would recommend you, you install a custom ROM onto this. You apply to get your bootloader unlocked. Once it's unlocked, you install a custom ROM. But maybe for some people, they wouldn't mind MIUI. But me personally, the MIUI on this thing is just annoying, which is why I went to a custom ROM. But MIUI is usable. It's usable. But for someone like me, it's just not usable. And that is it, guys. Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G, one year later. And I gave you guys my honest thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. And I'll catch you guys next time.